chapter 4, verses 4 to 6, as one body, one spirit, even as ye are called into one hope of your calling. There's one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. One God, one Father of all, who is above all, through all, and in you all. Why I am a member of the Church of Christ. I'm a member of the Church of Christ because I truly understand the concept of one. One Lord, one faith, and one baptism. Praise ye the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. The works of the Lord are great, sought out of all them that have pleasure therein. His work is honorable and glorious, and his righteousness endureth forever. He made his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He hath given meat unto them that fear him. He will ever be mindful of his covenant. He hath showed his people the power of his works, that he may give them the heritage of the heathen. The works of his hands are verity and judgment. All his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever, and are done in truth and uprightness. He sent redemption unto his people. He hath commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverend is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praises endure it forever. This psalm, if you would look at it very carefully, exalts God for the wonderful blessings that he has given to his people. If you look at this psalm, you will find that God takes the heritage of the heathen and gives it to his people. Amen. And, and to help you see that, uh, God, by promise, allowed Israel to go over into the land of Palestine, which was inhabited by the Philistine, and take control of that land. That was the most precious land on earth. It was called the Fertile Crescent. And yet God desired through promise that his people inherit that land. Isn't that wonderful? He gave the richest land that we can find on earth to his people, which used to be inherited and owned by those who were not his people. You know, God will bless us today in this way. Amen. Those things that are in this land which we desire, he'll give them to us because he owns all of them. And all we have to do is obey his blessed will. What a wonderful thought, brethren. That's why he concludes with, holy and reverend is his name. His name is to be praised. His name is to be exalted. Because he is the one. Why y'all act like y'all don't understand that? God has been good to us. And we ought to be ever grateful to him for it. Because he has blessed his people. And that's your psalm. And as you go through that during the week, and, and I know that, that most of us have only used that passage to bash people across the head. I'm aware of that. You shouldn't be calling anyone reverend. Well, as true as that might be, those on the majority who use it are only trying to respect those who worship and serve God by way of preaching the word. Yes, 
So we have to help them see. This is respect and glory and honor that is due him who will give his people the heritage of the heathen. Amen. Who will cause his people to be exalted. We have to help them to see that. Amen. Amen. Now to our lesson for this morning. I shall not be long. I want to look at the relationship of the kingdom of Christ, the body of Christ, and the church of Christ. Amen. I want to look at its relationship as it pertains to salvation. Because that's why we're all here. Isn't that right? We, we all want to be saved. And so we've heard all of these stories about the kingdom, and, and some have said, well, the kingdom is the church. And some have said, no, the kingdom is not the church. And then others have said, with respect to the body of Christ, they said that the body is composed of all these different churches. And then others have said, no, the body is composed of people and all of Well, we need to look at the relationship between these three terms that are used to identify one system. And we need to see the value of it with respect to the salvation of mankind. Now, it has been read to you hearing from the book of Matthew chapter uh, 16, and we'll go there in just a moment. But I want to give a few scriptures with respect to the kingdom and, we're, and the church and the body, and we're not going to have time to look at all of these per se, but I want to speak them into your hearing so in your private study you can go and look at these things. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 2, uh, and the verses of 2 and 3, Isaiah prophesied concerning the establishing of God's house, uh, his kingdom. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains, shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, and come ye, let us go up into the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, for he will teach us of his ways, we will walk in his paths, for out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And so Isaiah prophesied about 700 B.C., 700 years before Christ. Are you on the line? Yes, sir. In other words, Isaiah said that God was going to establish or build a house yes, in the top of the mountains, rather about 120 years uh, before Christ, that God was going to build or erect him a house in the top of the mountains. Well, as we go down the echoes of time, we find somewhere around 580 B.C. that another prophet of God by the name of Daniel. Y'all remember Daniel? Amen. In Daniel 2.44, Daniel prophesied that God was going to establish a kingdom which should never end. Amen. Listen to Daniel in chapter 2 and verse 44. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom uh, shall not be left unto people but it shall break in pieces, consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. So we find Isaiah in about 700 B.C., God going to build a house. <laughs> He's going to establish it in the tops of the mountains. About 580 B.C., Daniel comes on the scene and says, God is going to establish a kingdom. There isn't going to be an end to this kingdom. Is that right? Matthew 16, we find about 32 uh, B.C. This is uh, before the cross of Christ. You're going to find Jesus giving prophecy. Prophecy concerning the building of his church. He called it his kingdom. Amen. Now listen in verse 13 of Matthew 16. And when Jesus had come... And to the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples a question. Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? 
They answered him, saying, Some say that thou art Elias, or Jeremiah, John the Baptist, one of the prophets. Jesus says unto them, Whom do ye say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood had not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom. Y'all better stay here now. Listen now. The Bible says in Isaiah's prophecy, God was going to establish his house. Daniel said that God was going to erect a kingdom which should never end. Jesus says, I'm going to build my church. It is my kingdom. And I'm going to give the keys to Peter. I can learn some things from this. I can learn that from 700 B.C. all the way up to 32 years after the birth of Christ. Are y'all listening? That the kingdom, the church, and the house of God had not yet been established. Amen. I don't have to fight about that. Because Jesus is still promising to erect his kingdom his house, his church. Now we find, as we continue to go, after the death of Christ, and I'm filling all the gaps here, after the death of Christ, after the cross, one year, Pentecost, one year removed from A.D. 32, when Jesus made the promise to build his church, guess what happened? He did just that. Amen. Amen. For we find the fulfillment of the promise. In fact, when we look in Acts chapter 1, let's go over there. And he's talking to his apostles beginning in verse number 6. The question is asked. And, and see, all of these Jews were looking for this kingdom, brethren. All of them were looking for the kingdom. And if the kingdom had come, don't you think these Jews would have known it? Listen to me now. Before you go to Acts 1, back up and get Mark chapter 15. These Jews were still looking for the kingdom. Mark chapter 15 and verse 43. Now this is after the death of Christ. There were still folk, Jews, looking for the king. And it always disturbed me because I hear these these, these TV evangelists, they call them, supposedly are true members of the church in an attempt to deny the beginning of the kingdom and the church and the body of Christ uh, in A.D. 33. You hear them all saying that the church began during the days of Christ. Well, if that's so, why were the Jews still looking for it after his death. Man, if anybody would have known uh, that the kingdom was here, it would have been his apostles. Amen. They are the ones that he talked to. Amen. Yeah. It would have been those other disciples that followed him and sat at his feet, would, they, would it not? All right, let's look at it then. In, in Mark chapter uh, 15, verse 43, after the death, of Christ. Now this is going down toward uh, the Sabbath. The Bible says, verse 42, uh, now when the even was come because it was the preparation, that is, the day before the what? Sabbath. The Sabbath. Now Jesus had been crucified and had been laid in a bar of tomb. Stone had been rolled in front of it. Is that right? Amen. Hadn't got up yet. Chapter 16, he's going to get up of Mark's gospel. Now watch it. The Bible says in verse 43, Joseph of Arimathea, what kind of man? An honorable man, counselor, which also what? Waited, Waited for what? Yeah. For the king. Listen, here was Jesus hanging on the cross dead. Joseph of Arimathea, one who waited for the 
Why would he be waiting for the kingdom if it was already here? Amen. Amen. He was still waiting. Let's go further. Let's look at Acts 1 now. I, just, I want y'all to see this clearly. You got to understand, and, and what you're going to see, I hope, when we finish this, is that the kingdom, the body, and the church started at the same time. Why? Because they're one in the same thing. Amen. And anybody going to be saved is uh, going to have to be a member of the kingdom. They're going to have to be a member of the body. And they're going to have to be a member of the church that Jesus built. And that's what I'm trying to show you. So stay with this now. In Acts 1, just to show you he's talking to his apostles, I said if anybody should know whether or not the kingdom was established or not, it should have been his apostles. And they that followed him. Is that right? All right. The Bible says in verse number 2. Well, let's get one and two. Uh, the former treatise, have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach? How long? Unto the day in which he was taken up. After that, he through the Holy Ghost had given commandment unto who? Now, I, Luke is going to put together an orderly account of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day that he was taken up. Is that right? Amen. He wasn't taken up until after his death. Amen. Amen. After his burial. Is that right? right? He wasn't taken up until after his resurrection. Amen. 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 Yeah. You got all these folks trying to put him up there in heaven uh, uh, when he went in the grave. But I got news for you. If you study your Bible in Acts 1, is when he's taken up. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He's not taken up till Acts 1. Amen. We'll look at it in just a moment. But his apostles, uh, he had taught them. And if the kingdom was here while he was walking this earth, they would have been the ones that Jesus would have told. Yes, but he didn't tell them how you know all. Look at verse number 6. The Bible says, when they therefore, they who? The apostles, those that he taught. When they therefore uh, were come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Well, my friend, uh, queriest, I thought that during the days of Jesus, while he walked on earth, he established his kingdom. Not so, brethren. Amen. Not so, friends. Because if he did, his apostles whom he taught would have known it. Amen. They would have been members of it. Amen. Amen. But they weren't members of it. You know why they weren't members of it? Because it wasn't established yet. Amen. Amen. It had yet to be established. And so we find then that the kingdom was not established while Jesus was on earth. But in Mark, Matthew chapter 16, he promised to establish his kingdom, his church. Is that right? Yeah. Well now, uh, when would the apostles know of the establishing of the kingdom? Well, let's, let's read a little more. I think it's quite clear. We don't have to be rocket scientists to understand this. Listen at what Jesus said in verse 7. And he said unto them, It's not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power. Not that you will not know when it's here, but you don't have to know the time. You know, sometimes we get verbs and adverbs. And all, we get them all confused, don't we, brethren? And we want to make things something that they're not. Jesus is dealing with time. Amen. Time and space. And Jesus said, it's not for you to know the time, but you will know when. <laughs> Listen at what he says now. Stay with it. He says, not for you know the time, nor see his father put his own power, but ye shall receive power when? After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, 
and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and the other most parts of the earth. Now stay with this, friends, because I want this to be clear to you. Listen at Jesus' word. Jesus said it's not for you to know the time nor the season which the Father put in his own power. Concerning what? The kingdom. Is that right? Now they looked at the kingdom in a physical sense, and there are a lot of people who want to jump on this verse and say, well, they were talking about physical. Listen. Those people recognized that a kingdom of God was to be established. They knew that. They knew the prophecy of Isaiah. They knew the prophecy of Micah. They knew the prophecy of Daniel. They knew that a kingdom was coming. What they didn't understand is that that kingdom would be spiritual. But they understood the concept of a kingdom being established and that it would be established in Jerusalem unto the Israeli people is what they said. Spiritual, I mean physical Jews. But Jesus was to help them to understand, listen, that kingdom, and you can read it in Matthew chapter, uh, John chapter 18, Jesus 35 and following, that kingdom is not of this world. That's what he told Pilate. 